Can Update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. So what did Jerome Powell just say? Let me tell you. He said, cut it out. That's right. He said, cut it out. Now, who did he say that to? Well, he said it to the stock market. Everybody at the press conference is like, well, Jerome, what about the details of this economic indicator? I am going to tell you in this live stream why all these people are morons. I'm going to tell you what the real message of the Fed was today. And I'm going to tell you how it, how it is going to impact crypto. It is 420 East Coast time, June 14th. I'm going to tell you what the deal is. Okay. Now, let's start off. I can't see. Oh, here we go. FD White in the house. Welcome. We'll give people a little bit of time. Oh, got to change screen resolution. There we go. Okay, so now you're getting me in high def. Excellent. All right. Jeff is here. Welcome. Robin, welcome to the show. Now, I'll give you a hint. Why is crypto down? Crypto is down because the Fed just said that if you take stocks and you take risky assets up, we will hike rates in your face indiscriminately. So let me go into a little bit more detail as people join in. Again, I'd be happy to sort of repeat it as we go through it. Everyone is like, well, you know, the Fed just did a hawkish skip or a hawkish pause, or the Fed is looking at this data or that data. No, that's not what he said. If you listen to what he said about what the committee was talking about, they're unanimous in saying, we will hike again and again if you continue to rally stocks in our face, right? We want to cool demand. We want to bring this down. We want to bring that down. People, the stock market is a wealth effect. You can have certain economic data falling out of bed, but if people feel rich, they're going to spend money. They're going to buy houses. NVIDIA is worth a trillion dollars. We'll go over that chart. Don't miss it. Cut it out or we'll continue to hike rates. Now, let's go with a high school theme. So your parents go on a vacation to Asia. They go to, I don't know, Fiji, wherever. And you're at home. And you're having a huge party, like a blowout, like from an 80s movie kind of thing. And your parents call you up and go, are you having a party? Or are you going to have a party? And you're like, uh, no. As you stand there in your toga. And your parents say, well, you better not have a party or we're going to have the neighbors come in and look in or you're going to get in trouble, blah, 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 blah. A message all the way from Fiji. While you stand there in your toga, looking at all your other friends wearing togas, drinking out of a keg. Right? Are the parents in Fiji going to stop the toga party? Hardly. However, Powell did say, you know, you guys are having a toga party, but if you don't knock it off, naughty, guess what? Okay. The stock market is going to look at that and probably go, wow, Jerome, that's nice. We got a whole other month of partying before you, before you pull the punch bowl. Now, if they're smart, they would just sell and go on vacation. I'm not sure that they're going to do that in equities because a dollar in stocks is better than a dollar in the bank. And they may look at him and says he doesn't have the cojones to stop it now, which he, he does it mainly because I guess the treasury has to refinance itself. So I'm going to give the guy a break, but I wouldn't be shocked if the stock market looks at this and goes, okay, we'll party on. And the bond market looks at that and goes, oh, okay, whatever yours. See ya. I'm selling. Right. If everybody's going to party and buy stocks, then bonds are going to go down, rates are going to go up, and the Fed is going to have to go way beyond the inflation statistics. They're going to use the fact that, well, inflation is not at 2%. We have to continue to tighten. Yeah, they have to continue to tighten to stop the stock market. And in 1999, for Greenspan, that was not easy. Not easy at all. Naturally, crypto takes one look at this because crypto is fast moving. They look at the equity market delusion. They look at rising. I mean, the bond market's just going to absolutely hate this. 
Like they're going to wake up tomorrow morning and they're just going to be like, oh my God, sell everything. He's trying to stop NVIDIA and that may not work. Now, crypto, like I said, crypto looks at this and they look, crypto's like, oh, look at the big guys. You know, stocks are going up. Bonds are, bonds are afraid of the Fed. The Fed's told stocks, but stocks are having a toga party. Who's going to come help us? Well, nobody. Nobody. Crypto continues to be the redheaded stepchild, unfortunately. Right? In other words, the money flows towards stocks, and that's going to piss off the Fed. And then they're going to hike rates, and bonds are going to go down, and rates are going to go up, and that's bad for crypto. Meanwhile, the people who have to sell crypto at the end of the month for loss purposes or whatever, the hedge funds, they haven't done so yet. The market went straight down over a weekend. They didn't get a chance to sell. The market has sat here for three days, done nothing. So they have to sell. Everybody in equities has to buy because they all missed it and they can't look like they missed it. So it's called window dressing. So everybody buys stocks and everybody sells crypto, unfortunately. Now, it'd be great if they sold stocks too, but then again, that's worse for crypto. So as usual, legacy messes up everything in crypto because now we have Gensler and his goon-like behavior. And we have the Fed threatening to stop a party in equities when really what they're going to wind up doing is hurting crypto in the very near term. I don't think it's a total disaster, but I think it could be, particularly if the equity market just ignores Powell and continues to rampage higher. Higher stocks is not good for crypto at this point because Powell is not happy. and You will not hear this message on CNBC. Matter of fact, I keep cable to tune in to Powell press conferences, which is the cure for insomnia, although interesting. But then you have to listen to the CNBC talking heads. And sometimes I wonder when are they going to put me on that network? Okay, let's see who's here. All right, we have we have Robin, we have Forget About It from Smashville, Kennedy, Ronnie. Don't forget to hit the like button. I know all my friends here are. Chris, Nico, Patrico from Chile. Welcome. Richard Barry, LFG, Coffee Farts, Metabice, Alexandra, Alexandro. Okay. <laughs> JCap, Rudy, welcome. K, Re uh, K Real, what's going on? Crypto Crazy, wrong again. Bo Rabbit, Art, welcome from Holland, up late at night. Thank you. Okay, Rue is here. <laughs> Telmo says, I dream with Powell. Yes. Dreaming the equities dream. Thomas, welcome. Okay, now I got to try to pour into some of this news. You know, I will try to continue the Fed rant along the way. Okay, so if you're wondering why the Federal Reserve is probably using lagging data or these guys just don't get it, right? Intelligent brains are slower in processing complex information, okay? The surprising finding was made by researchers, okay? They tested 650 people, okay? They measured their IQ, and then it says the participants with higher IQs could see the solutions to easy problems. However, that was not the case with the complexity of the problems increased. They produced the correct answer, but it took them much longer. That's interesting, right? So if you're a genius, you will get the right answer. But if you make it too complicated, you know, geniuses have to think about it. They're not supercomputers, okay? And it explained about how their brains function. So if you're an economist, you don't get to work at the Fed if you're an idiot. They're having trouble putting information together and they're having trouble communicating it. And now what they're communicating is to tell the stock market to cut it out, as I said earlier in the show. Now, let's talk about William Hinman. Here was what I understood for all us XRP army out there. My understanding is that, you know, Ripple filed, got seven court orders from the SEC, which apparently doesn't have to, you know, does, doesn't have to acknowledge one court order, 
They got seven court orders for the documents related to William Hinman, who essentially wrote a speech or an article that said Ethereum is not a security. And I was assuming Ripple wanted this so they could show people that the SEC has said that the Ethereum is not a security. And then all of a sudden, the SEC took this guy's bio down from its website in full X-Files fashion. So I'm thinking this is good for XRP, right? Well, maybe not. I'm kind of wondering. So the XRP legal team says it's been five years since Bill Hinman gave his famous speech, right? We could finally share what happened behind the details. Now he goes through this whole thing, okay? And he says, this speech should be removed immediately. An investigation must be conducted, right? In other words, why were conflicts ignored knowing that this speech, get this, created greater confusion? So it looks like Hinman is the father of foggy guidance. Because according to this tweet thread, when he was talking about what was and what was not decentralized, he was kind of shooting from the hip, as in winging it, as in borderline making stuff up. Who knew? Okay. And this is what the, this is the Ripple is saying, Hinman's speech should never again be invoked in any serious discussion about whether a token is or is not a security. So I thought Hinman was going to help XRP. Uh, it turns out, I don't, I don't know if it does. Bureaucrats must apply the law. They can't, as Hinman tried, to create a new law. So XRP is a uh, ripple is apparently going to show that whatever this guy was doing, he was making stuff up on the fly. And of course, God bless him. I hope they do that. But I'm just merely stating a fact that, you know, my view was, you know, the Hinman report was going to just, you know, it was all over for the government. XRP was going to win going away. But all we know from Hinman was he was the guy who made stuff up. I, I, I don't know how that helps the crypto space. To, to me, it doesn't. And I don't know if it helps XRP and Ripple. Now, I, I hope it does because this guy's obviously on top of it, right? But XRP has been outperforming. So no one's going to get rid of their XRP bag, and I'm not telling you to do so. I'm just telling you, you better do your own research and figure out whether this speech from Hinman is bullish or not. Meanwhile, back at the Treasury Ranch, Congress tells Janet Yellen to have the Treasury and Federal Reserve make preparations for a situation where China dumps all their U.S. Treasuries overnight. Translated into English, this means the U.S. government is concerned about a massive lack of liquidity in the bond market. If, if, when stocks get absurd and just go right down the absurd trail, right? Bonds collapse. The treasury can't refinance itself. Okay, well, they've set it up to blame the Chinese. Whatever they have to do. The government bond market's broken and so is the dollar, right? Janet said it's going to have a reduced uh, role as the world's reserve currency, you know, whatever. Janet just needs the dollar to go down because the only way out of a debt crisis is to have the dollar go lower. But the government is setting it up. So if the bond market breaks, they're going to blame it on China. SEC removes the Hinman bio from its website. Okay, again, XRP jumps. Okay, well, we'll check the charts to make sure it's jumping. I like this. Proposed crypto bill would help clear up latest SEC allegations. But the Texas Blockchain Council, who I happen to know some people there, they're smart, and McKinsey, partner, not optimistic on the prospect of the proposal's passage. Of course not. Because the president would have to sign it. And the administration, who already knows, per the articles we just went over, that the dollar and the bond market are going to break at some point, does not want Bitcoin at 100K. So, you know, they, they woke up Gensler and turned him into the Frankenstein monster running through Cryptoville, scaring everybody. You know, why is the government going to fire the guy that they just told to take down crypto? Okay, here's how bad it is. 
Apple will remove something from its app store that allows people to tip in Bitcoin. I mean, Silicon Valley benefited from the fact that, you know, Gensler decided to target Web3 in terms of the tokens that are allegedly securities. Now, Silicon Valley Bank is trying to get away from crypto as fast as possible. Naturally, Apple is probably trying to, uh, you know, put a dig in the side of crypto as they try to centralize the metaverse with their $3,600 goggles that Jim Cramer swears will change the world. So, you know, the Fed wants to kill the metaverse. I'm sorry. The SEC wants to kill the metaverse. Apple wants to kill the metaverse. Again, we're all living in an X-Files movie. We really are. Oh, the SEC refuses to respond to Coinbase's lawsuit. Does the, you know, does, does the government have to do anything? Does the government have to follow the law? Does buy, you know, government by the people for the people? Or is it just, I don't know, 1984? 1984. You'll see in the thumbnail, I'm wearing a corsage with my suit. We put that in because literally it is 1984. These guys are accountable to nobody. Metaverse tokens get hammered. They failed to pump after highly anticipated launch of the Apple headset. They're going to try to kill crypto. But what people are going to realize eventually is that when you're in the metaverse, you're going to be interacting with AI. So when you take singularity.net and if they start getting into the metaverse or any metaverse connects with AI, that's going to be the winner. People are going to want a decentralized solution. And what's going to happen is everybody's going to sell. Everyone's going to panic right before that all materializes. Warren Davidson, congressman, right? Former army ranger. Okay. Says that, you know, last night I joined CNBC to talk about the SEC Stabilization Act. Now, this may seem repetitive to you, but it's not. Because remember, the byproduct of Gensler, the byproduct of the Silicon Valley pushback, okay, will be politicians coming in to stand up for crypto. I mean, how easy is it going to be for politicians to cater to a crypto crowd? Crypto crowd has been wrecked. The equities crowd is enjoying the tightening environment by sipping margaritas poolside, watching their levered NVIDIA position rise. So the top 1% laugh all the way to the bank. Crypto gets wrecked because of heavy-handed government officials. How easy is it going to be for a politician to say, you know what? I'll stop this nonsense in crypto if you vote for me. It's not about the SEC Stabilization Act. It's about calling your congressman to let them know that they better have their resume in order in two years or whenever because, you know, you're going to vote for them or, someone, or somebody else, right? Now, again, that's not being taken into account. Remember, everyone is like, oh, the Bitcoin halving is coming. Yes, the Bitcoin halving will be eight to nine months before a presidential election. So the candidates will be on the tape aggressively right at the Bitcoin having talking crypto up, not down, up. Okay, again, U.S. lawmakers, U.S. lawmakers, crypto firms should start preparing, you know, more disaster porn on regulation. No one's talking about markets. Janet Yellen's talking about markets. To her credit, at least she's talking about them. Powell doesn't talk about markets. The SEC doesn't talk about markets. The media doesn't talk about markets. Everyone wants to talk about regulation. Okay. Snoop drops new NFTs that will evolve with his tour. So I'm totally down with Web3 and I'm totally down with NFTs, although I'm not sure Snoop is helping everybody with this. I get it. Web3 is cool and put the cool factor in, gets people interested. You get Gen Z interested in the Gen X artist. Okay. Snoop doing NFTs with the SEC after Matic. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if that's helping us. It's definitely not helping us today. Okay. Sammy Hagar from Van Halen tries to get 
Gen Z involved. Don't blame them. Love Sammy. Binance emergency fund dwindles. Okay. Noticing a theme in the media towards crypto disaster ideas. Okay. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. The thing is, if they don't take Binance down, if Binance gets a banking partner or if somebody stands up and says, blank you to the SEC by helping Binance after a liquidation event. See, if I was smart, if I was going to do a strategic move with Binance, I'd let this market cascade lower and have everybody talking about it going to zero before I would pull the trigger. Okay. The crypto industry is destined to be Bitcoin focused after the SEC action. So credit to Michael Saylor. He's been saying everything is a security except Bitcoin. Hard to argue with him based on how the SEC has been working, talking his book. Now, what he doesn't realize is if these guys turn around and start putting ETH functionality on the Bitcoin blockchain, then Bitcoin might not be a security, maybe, but is a Satoshi a security? If a Satoshi has an NFT attached to it, is that a security? Just saying. Don't be a Bitcoin maxi and be cheering for the demise of decentralized finance. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. Inflation. Does anyone care? You know, oh, CPI is up, PPI is down, ISM is up. I love legacy and they love their minutia over there. Oh my God, this economic data point says this. Oh my God, that's economic data point. People, there's only one economic data point in legacy and that's S&P. And maybe QQQ and NVIDIA and Tesla. That's it, right? There's, there's two things that matter in legacy. One guy said this. There's the S&P 7, which are the seven tech stocks that go up every day because everyone is trying to get away from the banking system, which we will talk about, okay? And then there's the S&P 493. Now, as you might suspect, this impacts crypto because inflation is actually getting better. It's not getting worse. It's getting better. The thing that's, that's not getting better is the stock market. You will never get inflation down with the stock market moving the way it is. Never. And crypto is going to take one look at this and go, oh my God, we got to sell. Powell's going to come and these guys in July, he's going to lose his mind. They're going to do 25 or 50 and they're just, they're not going to stop until stocks go down. And that could take months. Crypto doesn't have months. Crypto's like, oh, okay. We got to go. They don't want to go. Now, this is another thing about crypto that you need to understand. The people selling crypto now don't want to sell. Last year, it was you. I, I wanted to prevent you from selling your crypto to institutions who were standing down there to take the Bitcoin at 16K. This time around, it's reversed. You are sitting there waiting for some institution to puke their crypto to you because you sold on Memorial Day and went away. And we're going to sit here and watch these people get forced to sell crypto because when you, if you wake up on the 15th of June and interest rates start rising again, again, I don't think crypto's waiting for that. We'll go to live markets in a minute. Okay. So let's, uh, let's continue to welcome who's here. Okay. Glendale, California, Daniel, welcome. Robert crypto future. Okay. FD who I appreciate giving me some love on Twitter says we're tanking. Metabuy says crypto is dumping, not a shock. Timeless podcast. Southern California is here, Jason. Okay, now I'm going to go, let's, let's check where the market is. Let's make sure this market is not at zero, although it looks like it wants to do that. Uh, let me go to, let's go to DeMarc. We'll do a little live TA update before I go to the PowerPoint because we need to drive, you need to, you need to see legacy because I can tell you right now, you're not going to get this on CNBC. You're not. Okay. So that's Ethereum 90 minutes. Okay. That's obviously not good. Okay. You know, oh, I got to share the screen. Here we go. Okay. So you got a DeMarc chart. This is one, two, three, four, five. 
And you will have six, seven, eight, nine on the, the mark chart. So here's how this works. You have the beginning part of a trend. It's like the low is lower than the low four days ago. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. And then, you know, you're going to have <clears throat> normally the first part of a trend, excuse me. Okay. Has, it'll have nine counts. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then there'll be a bounce. And then if the trend is going to continue, you'll have, you know, one through 13, that's called countdown. So obviously on a 90 minute chart, this is bad. You're going to have at least one more day of this thing getting hammered at, at least. In other words, you forget about this thing, the whole rest of the day and tomorrow. Okay. Not getting any cooperation on my Bitcoin chart. Let me see if I can move to four hours. Although I think you get the point. Okay. So here's the four hour chart of Bitcoin. Okay. The four hour chart of Bitcoin is here's the 13 bottom. That's the end of the countdown phase. This is a dead cat bounce. And this is the count starting all over again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on a four hour chart. Okay. So multiply seven times four. That's 21 hours of getting hammered. Hammered is what's going to happen to this thing. Just smack bill. Okay. Again, the daily chart, Bitcoin, one, two, three, four, five. So you got all day today and you got four more down days in ETH. I think you get the point. All right. Now we will obviously continue to go through live markets. I think you're going to, well, I know you're going to want to see these slides. So we can talk about something that they were talking about on CNBC, which is the Fed is going to tighten until they break something. Now, that was my line for a long time. Now I have a new line. The Fed has to stop the stock market. They cannot complete their mandate. They cannot stop inflation unless they stop the stock market. And you know what the stock market's going to do? The stock market is going to be like, you know what? Go ahead and make us. Seriously, go to 6% Fed funds, do it. Okay, so Goldman is saying that the negative sentiment, right, in equities is quickly getting reversed as everyone is back in the pool for the summer. <laughs> now, of course, the, the flip side of this argument about the equities rebellion is that when everyone is in the pool, the next thing that enters is the toaster. When everyone is in the pool, electronic device incoming. So maybe everyone goes, okay, we're scared of Jerome. Who knows? You look at S&P on a four-hour chart, it looks like a nine top. That could be it. But if they all buy this dip and it turns around and it's up tomorrow or the next day, they will expect new bull market exposure allocations and not having missed it because portfolio managers are embarrassed. NVIDIA. So the artificial intelligence poster boy is on a DeMarc 3. So they had this huge gap up, but there was really no DeMarc signal. And theoretically, you could have six more updates in NVIDIA. Because if they come in tomorrow and realize that Jerome is okay with the party for another month or longer, or that he can't stop it, it scares me. Tesla, probably going to have a 13 top tomorrow. Okay, if that doesn't stop Tesla... Now, if you were ever looking for a perfect example of what DeMarc does in a trend, you know, you have, you know, you have one through nine, then you have like a little dip right here, and then you just count down to 13. This is like something out of a book. Bottom line is, you know, a dollar in Tesla is better than a dollar in the bank until Jerome Powell pulls the punch bowl. And I don't know that that's happened. He's pulling the punch bowl in crypto because crypto. Crypto is having a sensitive and vulnerable moment. But these guys, these guys are a toga party. Now, junk bonds. Okay. This is about to get really interesting. Remember, you know, Powell got up and said something at one of the meetings and a bank failed the next day. Okay. There's been a huge squeeze in junk bonds. HYG is the ETF. Nine top. Naturally, they had to buy the dip today because they can't get enough. 
It's going to be real interesting to see, because I can tell you right now, if HYG is down tomorrow, this is confirmation that the Fed is going to hike rates until the stock market breaks, and that's going to break banks and junk bonds way before it breaks tech stocks. Okay, IWM is small caps. I don't know if you knew this, but Apple is now worth more than all 2,000 stocks in this index put together. Now, right now, IWM is at resistance. So maybe IWM has a dip day after a nine top. You see IWM break out at any point in the next three days. Okay, you know that the equity market is like up. Oh, we're just going to party. Bonds, ZB, 127.03 is resistance. 125.24 is support. If ZB goes down on TradingView, if this goes down and rates go higher, this is bad for crypto. I think crypto saw this candlestick in ZB and that's when they just started selling. Okay, ZB weekly, long bonds weekly, long-term interest rates, 13 bottom, one week up. Then it's basically six, seven, eight, nine. So you got this week is a down week and then probably three more down weeks in bonds. Rates up, crypto scared, running from the hills like Little Red Robin Hood from the Big Bad Wolf. Sucks, I know. Okay, ETH. Okay, so these charts all, all done. 1649 was a level. XLF was financial stocks. This right here with this nine top, okay, a four wave up, <clears throat> you know, this begs for a new low in financials. I think if bonds go down and rates go up because the Fed is really on the war path about equities, financial stocks are going to get wrecked. I mean, it's going to increase the flows into tech stocks, but financial stocks are going to get absolutely wrecked. They're assuming the Fed pause was good. They weren't expecting the Fed to say, okay, we're going to pause now, parentheses, to help the Treasury. But if they don't cut it out in equities, we'll do another 50. We'll do more than that. That was the tone I got today. Like, you people can cut it out or we'll make you cut it out. Now, that is really bad for banks. This is BX Blackstone. Look at this, right? Nine top, right at resistance, right at a diagonal DeMarc point. I'm sorry, a, a, a dotted DeMarc line. I mean, this is bad, okay? He's going to break the system. Now, again, that's really good for crypto. But, you know, we have to wait for this to materialize. They will sell crypto as Blackstone is going down. I'm telling you, this is going to be the greatest V bottom in the history of crypto. And this is the chart that's going to give it to you, okay? GLD, daily, gold, three more down days. Okay, so we may have one last puke lower in gold. I know someone wants to look at the dollar. I will do that. Cardano, okay, on the hit list. Nine bottom, small rally, failed rally. 13 more down days in Cardano incoming if today is as bad as it looks. Wrong again is like WTF, I don't blame you. Dollar is coming up. ICP, 13 bottom, nine bottom, if there's no rally in this, if this does not save the market, the market is done. Ethereum versus Bitcoin, some rare DeMarc work in a cross rate. So you got a nine bottom in Ethereum versus Bitcoin. There should be some kind of a bounce, like ETH should have kind of a good day. Maybe that was yesterday. Okay, if there's a failed rally in Ethereum versus Bitcoin, are they go? yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, if there's a failed rally or they just go Tesla and they just say, okay, we're just going to go, altcoins are just done, right? You're going to have Bitcoin dominance at 50, okay? Bitcoin could probably go to 24K, possibly 23,600. Now, if you look at this chart that says Bitcoin can go lower and you look at this chart of Ethereum versus Bitcoin, if Ethereum, which is in a deflationary situation, is not outperforming Bitcoin or is getting drubbed versus Bitcoin. Let's hope that doesn't happen. But if what if that's what happens to ETH, what is going to happen to the rest of this market? And that is the market update. Okay, let's go to the dollar. Okay, so we can demystify that. Okay, notice dollar is lower. 
So dollar is down on the day and so is crypto. Oh, share screen. Having a share screen problem. Okay. So dollar is lower. Red candle. Dollar is hosed. We've been through this, right? I mean, if you have not watched the market update until today, welcome to the market update. If you've been watching the market update, you know what I think about the dollar. Okay. It's toast. It's toast. It has to be toast. They want it to go lower. I'm wondering when they're going to ask Jay Powell about the dollar. Everyone's like, oh, the Fed's mandate. The Fed's mandate. I thought the Fed's mandate was to fight inflation and defend the currency. They talk about everything but. E everything but. The dollar is toast. It's toast. Okay? Now, the dollar is toast, but Bitcoin is still going lower. It's still going lower. I mean, let's go, let's go to the dollar index on like, say, an 89-minute chart. Okay? So this is dollar index, 89-minute. This is hidden pivot analysis. So this analysis would show And if the dollar index goes below 102.95, the downside target is 102 even. That's at a minimum. Okay, so they're going to sell crypto for the next 15 days while the dollar either sits here or teeters. The dollar is done. It is absolutely done. Now, wrong again is like, why is crypto down? Ronnie is like, yes, Bitcoin is down. Yeah. Bitcoin is down because everyone who had to sell it never got the chance to. They never got the chance to sell Bitcoin. They never got a chance to get out. Here's more proof to what I'm saying. So obviously Bitcoin's lower, but did you know while the SEC is busy, busy suing Binance and Coinbase, BlackRock is hoovering up Bitcoin, Bank of America, Fidelity. Okay. Guess who wants to control crypto? Right here. And the government actually wants these guys to control crypto. Okay. Fidelity, Bank of America, BlackRock, top 10 owners of MicroStrategy. So I don't blame them. They're going to buy MicroStrategy as a way to buy Bitcoin. Okay. But this is who the Fed wants in charge of America. I'm sorry. This is who the administration wants in charge of America because they're bought and paid for back to the market. Okay. I'm showing Bitcoin. Oh my God. It's down 4%. Now this is called forced selling. Uh, obviously, right? This is forced selling. Let's try hidden pivot analysis on a four hour chart of Bitcoin to see where a tactical bottom might be. So I have 24,300 on this chart. Let's go to ETH, which is probably, oh okay, I, I don't even know how to draw this at this point. Okay, here's ETH. Okay, if there's going to be a bounce in ETH, it should be off 1592. So 1592 and 24.3 in Bitcoin. Now, just to reinforce this point, when you have these kind of debacles, they're not over in a day. They're not over in a week. They may be over in a month. Okay? It's, just, it's for selling. It's absolute for selling. Nobody wants to sell down here, but they're going to have to. Okay? Let's go to DeMarc on altcoins. So if you're interested in altcoins, let's see what we can do. Now, here's what they were trying to do. Let's go to XRP. Okay. So XRP gets smacked. Okay. You get a nine bottom. So I think this is very relevant because this was the most, this was the, this was the one that was outperforming nine bottom on XRP. XRP should see a bid here. Okay. XRP has to get above 
this low to state the obvious. Okay, that's 47 cents. If XRP is not above 47 cents, then you could have an extended down trade because frankly, this Hinman thing is not bullish. I'm not saying that they're not going to win the lawsuit. I'm just saying this Hinman thing was not as bullish as people thought it was. Okay, I was looking at Polkadot because Polkadot was higher before this debacle started. Okay, now the problem with Polkadot, the problem with any of these altcoins, this was a three wave down. Okay, that means there should be a four wave up because in Elliott wave, you have five waves. You go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so you have three waves in the direction of the trend one, three, and five. In polka dot, the trend is down. So you have this resistance point at 462. They do a fantastic job of taking it through there. One, two, three, four. So 16 hours, you looked at polka dot and were like, oh my God, I missed it. And then they drop it. Who wants to sell polka dot below $5? Nobody. Polka dot isn't even on the SEC hit list. Doesn't matter. It's for selling. It's for selling, right? Justin, welcome. Okay, so let's go to Solana. Okay, again, look at this Solana. You know, just starting the DeMarc move. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Cardano, if you look at a four-hour chart there, okay, I mean, Car Cardano kind of states the obvious. Now, the good news is, you know, it's the 13 bottom on a four-hour chart that better stop the market from going lower, okay? When you see this on the daily, you have the nine bottom, and then it just starts failing. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know what I'm saying? Now, there's another thing that I have not talked much about, and I'll do this with Gala, okay? I talked a lot about a change in the Jupiter cycle, okay? Jupiter was changing the sections of space that it was in. Happens every 12 years, this particular one. To, to sum up all the research, whatever bubble there is, the bubble gets bigger. Whatever crash there is, the crash gets bigger. And if you have a crash after a bubble, it's epic. That's what happened in Bitcoin in 2011. So with Gala, right? You have a 13 bottom that has no effect. You have a nine bottom that gives you the classic, you know, counter trend rally and then fail. You know, below 0.0179, you know, this, this could be, this could be just absolute hammer time for the rest of June. I don't want to say that, you know, because loyal readers are into this. But, you know, you really got to ask yourself, can you watch this thing go down two weeks in a row? Now, of course, if it does, we all know that that's going to be, I think, a V bottom. Okay. Brick dreams late but present. You're never too early. You're never too late. You're right on time. Okay. Cosmos. Okay. Same problem as Gala, right? Nine bottom, failed rally, closed below eight and a half dollars. I don't know, man. This is this is very close. This is where this thing took off from in December. So this is not entirely clear what's going on here in Cosmos. This doesn't look as bad as the other ones, but I'm telling you right now, if this is down today and this is down for the rest of the week, you need one more down day in this. And they all look like this. All of them. I think the only one that may look different is Avalanche. Okay. So Avalanche, which is not on the hit list, has got support at $10.70. So if there is something, if, if the, the new XRP could be Avalanche, because they could hit that tomorrow below 1070, run stops, and it'd be very interesting to see if it comes back. 
Now, to say it again, if you get a bottom in Avalanche tomorrow and it rallies and it fails, it's going. To, if, if the good coin is not good, then the whole market is just done. Jazz is here from Australia. Welcome. Okay, welcome to our friends from Australia. Late breaking Fed crypto dump debacle market update. Okay. Okay. Somebody wants to look at Solana versus Bitcoin. What an outstanding idea. Okay. So Solana versus Bitcoin looks like ETH versus Bitcoin, right? You got the nine bottom today. So you would think Solana should do better at some point. But if it doesn't, then it's going to look like Tesla, right? So the nine top gave you a wicked reversal, okay? Solana should have at least one good day against Bitcoin. But if it doesn't, you're going to have this, okay? You know, you had the nine, you paused, and you went. And Solana and all these old coins, they could go the other way. You know, I guess we should pull up Bitcoin dominance. I mean, if we're going to check, we're going to check. It's funny, Bitcoin dominance really isn't even up today, which is kind of scary, right? Now, this is a really nice looking green candle today because, you know, it's like a reversal. I mean, the diamond target on Bitcoin dominance is 50.7. Okay, so when you have a diamond, Okay, for anybody who has not seen this, okay, the way you measure a diamond target is as follows. The way you measure a diamond target is as follows. Okay, you go to the bottom of the diamond and then you go to the top of the diamond, right at the center. Then you project that distance from the point of the breakout. Now, of course, this fact that this was a false breakout and then they turned around and knifed through the top of the diamond at the apex. I know that was a lot of gibberish. I don't know if you could get anything any more bullish than this. You have the most violent pattern that there is with a violent breakout at the most violent point. A violent false breakout and then an ensuing breakout the other way at the most violent point, which is the apex. The apex is the pointy part of the triangle. Bitcoin dominance is currently at 49. It's going to 50.7 according to this chart. Okay. Right. Metabuy says just an opinion, but I don't think we see a bottom until we get word on the XRP court case outcome. Okay. Well, that, that would be simply awful. But that is possible. That is possible. Okay. Interesting that silver managed to wind up today. Rates up. Well, rates weren't up today. But silver managed to hold in. Now, of course, I work in a precious metals-based crypto startup. So I'm organically biased towards precious metals. But as the dollar goes down, all I can think to say is, is as gold does this consolidation, if gold runs, stops, and heads towards, say, 1922, like we were looking for three more down days in GLD, okay, look for the V bottom in gold. Look for it. Now or at the end of the month. I'm hoping it's sooner rather than later. Everybody is focused on whether or not the dollar is the world's reserve currency. People need to be focused on the fact that most likely gold is going to be the new reserve asset. Followed by crypto. Their attempt to stop crypto is not going to work. Their attempt to stop gold, it's working for the moment, but I don't think that's going to work either. Janet Yellen is telling you that. Okay. Pancakes and peanut butter burning down the house. Going out, ETH down 5%, Bitcoin down 3%, okay? Now, you may be asking yourself, well, 
It's down. It's too late to adjust my position. It's not too late to adjust your position. The most important thing, and I know I've repeated this, but I'm going to continue to repeat it. The most important thing is that when this is over with, you have capital to get into Bitcoin. Because whether it's at the end of June or at some other point, this is going to be the biggest V bottom in the history of crypto. Now, that all will all depend on whether or not the Fed can stop the equity market. Honestly, they just threatened to today, which is why crypto is freaking out. Crypto is freaking out that interest rates are going to go higher because the Fed is acting like, you know, the, the Fed is running scared from equities and equities are smoking the vapors from artificial intelligence. So it's 1999 all over again, where it's the Fed versus tech stocks, right? As they say in ten tennis, advantage tech stocks, which means higher rates, which means a tough time for crypto. So don't get wrecked. We got to be there for the dawn. I'm your host, Bill Noble. We'll see you Friday.